Hi guys, welcome back to Flora Fun and Food. My name is Lauren and today I'm going to show you how to jumpstart a motorcycle all by yourself. Um, I went to go on a family ride this morning and my bike was completely dead even though I left it on a trickle charger last night, which I'll show you that in a little bit. So to get started, what you need to do is put the key in the ignition, turn it on, hit your ignition switch, and then make sure you're in second gear. My dad forewarned me if you're in first gear, it's going to throw you over the handlebars. Second gear, it's not so bad. Um, it's easier if you get yourself on a hill of some sort to get a running start. But basically what you're going to do is once you're in second, you're going to put the clutch in. You're going to get going as fast as you can manually. You're going to pop the clutch, which means let it out. As soon as the engine engages, you're going to put the clutch back in and it should jump start it. You're basically using the rotation of the back wheel to turn the engine versus when you use the ignition, it turns the engine to then turn the wheel. So um, without further ado, let me show you how to do it on my bike. I have a 2004 Honda Shadow Arrow um, and I have a choke on mine. So if you have an older bike like I do, you have to turn the choke on if it's been sitting and the engine is cold. I just got back from a, an all day ride. So my engine is nice and warmed up. So I don't need the choke right now, um, but there's just a little tip and trick there. So let's see if we can get it jump started. Turn your key on, put your kickstand up, turn your ignition switch on, make sure you're in second gear, put the clutch in and get a nice rolling start, pop the clutch out, put it back in as soon as it engages, and that's that. Now, it took me a couple of tries to get the hang of it this morning, so just practice, and it's really pretty easy once you get going. The easier thing, though, is to just go get a new battery, so that's what we're gonna do soon. Okay, this is the trickle charger that I have. Um, it's just a pretty simple one. There are two ends. One is to plug into the wall or an extension cord. The other plugs into the cord on your bike, and I'll show you where that is now. So on my Honda Shadow, I have a little cover here, which just pops off. And sometimes a little rubber gaskets come off with it. So this pops off and then underneath is this cord, okay? And it has a plug that looks just like the other plug on your trickle charger. There's a metal end and kind of a plug end. And you need to make sure you match those up. Plug it in, positive to negative. And then if this were plugged in, I'm outside so I don't have it plugged in, but the light on the charging indicator should turn on. And then once it is fully charged, the trickle charger won't overcharge your battery. The green light will come on here just telling you that it is at full capacity. And if it dips below that, the trickle charger will continue trickling electricity into it. So hopefully this will help keep it, you know, during the winter months from dying. I am gonna go get a new battery because we rode probably a couple hundred miles today and it I had to jump start it every single time. I'm sure everybody got a, a lovely, entertaining show every time I had to run down the street and get it going manually. But if you're ever in a bind, you can do it yourself. You don't need to take the whole seat off to get down to the battery, which is what I have to do on mine. Um, I will have to take the seat off obviously to change the battery. But if you're out and about and your bike dies, you can jump start it all by yourself. So if you ever need to do that, I hope this helped and I hope that you learned something. Please remember if you liked this video or want to follow me along on my journey of other projects that I'm doing right now, please make sure you like, subscribe, all the YouTube things um, and have a great day. Thanks guys. Bye.